everybody. Welcome to Jazz After Dark. How you doing out there? I hope you all are well. Grab a drink with me tonight. Hang out. Let's talk to those of you that are in your 50s, huh? Who's in your 50s out there? I get closer every day. I'm officially 41 years old as of last week. Uh, drinks this week, well, at least for the next three days, we've got an Irish whiskey mix here with uh, Flaviar. We don't uh, really... I guess promote them, but uh, we do have a discount code if you want there. They were nice enough to, to give us one of those. Um, and I did the Irish whiskey mix here. The first one we're going to start with is two stacks. The first cut, 43% uh, alcohol by volume, tropical fruits, cereal, vanilla, spicy, and nutty. Oh. Hey, by the way, if you're in your 50s, what do you focus on for retirement? like planning and strategy and stuff. What is it that you should be looking at? Um, whole different story than those of you that are in your 20s and 30s. You probably clicked away by now. Okay, I do get fruity in there. You see, they give you this little card. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, tropical fruits. Yeah, I do get that. Mm-hmm. Oh, immediate tropical fruits. Oddly enough, cereal. <laughs> it's kind of like a, almost like a, Sweet candy kind of a flavor there. Not very spicy. Uh, two stacks. Probably good to mix with something. You know, if you're going to mix that into a drink. Uh, not my favorite, but uh, Irish whiskey, two stacks there. I give it like a, I give it like an 80, you know, out of 100. Hmm. We'll see if it grows on me. Very light, very um, sort of calm, which is weird for an Irish whiskey. I would have expected a little more punch, but uh, maybe it's just me. All right. Um, I'm going to go over four things here to, tonight with you, and in no particular order or by significance. Um, these are things that I've come across here. We're financial advisors, and um, we obviously deal with a lot of people that are in their 50s and beyond, uh, being based in Florida here, but we have clients all over the country, and I find that we're really kind of honing in on the same topics. However, we've got to dissect them individually for the person, right? Of course, everybody's lives are a little bit different. The first thing that um, I would look at is, um, and again, this isn't in order, but uh, estate planning. What is, what's the likelihood that you're going to have money left over when you die? You, your spouse, whatever, right? If you're single, it doesn't matter, whatever. Um, a lot of people, and I mean this, I'm not just saying this, but a lot of people tend to oversave. There's like a disconnect between how much we need to save and how much we actually save. And it's always more people, at least the people I run into. So what I'm talking about with estate planning is not necessarily wills and trusts and things like that. Uh, that's at a certain level, right? Um, if you lead a relatively simple financial lifestyle, having your beneficiaries, you know, I've harped on that to death, right? I've beaten that to death in your brokerage accounts, your IRAs, 401ks, TSP, 403b, um, you know, pension plans and things those don't need to go into a trust. They can, uh, but they don't need to be really in a will either because the beneficiary will supersede that. No one else can make a claim against your IRA if you have clearly listed the beneficiary. And this involves their social security number, um, sometimes their state of residence, and that's just a way to differentiate that person, really make sure that it's going to the right person. And of course, their name, uh, full name. And that's really... It, right? You just list that on your accounts and you're good to go there. Um, when it gets into more complex uh, financial lives, maybe you've been married a few times, uh, kids with different uh, relatives and things, maybe adopted a kid or something and your spouse passed away when you adopted the kid. Um, these are all things I've heard of. Okay, well now, now maybe we're talking more about setting up a trust. Having a disabled child, of course, is an issue there as well. Maybe uh, beneficial to set up a trust. So estate planning becomes more of a focus. The kids, they haven't thought of that yet, right? So when they start saving and investing, they want growth. They just want as much as they can get. And I understand that. The second thing we're going to look at is um, your what, what's your life look like in retirement? Uh, if you're going to look it up and try to do more research, just probably search like retirement lifestyle, right? How to plan for your retirement lifestyle or something. Um, it's usually more clear to people when they're in their 50s what retirement looks like because we're kind of knocking on retirement's door there, right? When you're in your 30s, and I ask this of everybody that joins us here, I say, tell me what retirement looks like. You can guess for all I care, but we need to start down a path. Did you ever have that in school? 
where the teacher, one of your teachers would be like, hey, for extra credit, write down what it is you want to do for a living. And you're like, I, me, I was like, I don't know. I, uh, maybe I'll be a pilot, right? So I wrote that down, but I wasn't sure. And I like bickered with the teacher about this. Well, when you're in your 50s, uh, it's a lot easier. You've thought about, am I going to retire at 55 and try to make this work? Am I happy and I'm going to work till 65? Will my spouse retire first? What does our lives look like? And if I can give you a friendly uh, drinking tip, right? Can I give you a tip? Do not retire at the exact same time as your spouse. Let them go first, right? Uh, friendly, just from seeing it, I'm just saying I won't spill any beans for anybody. Don't retire. Don't have that retirement party for both of you at the same time. I have seen it time and time again. You guys retire, you pick up all the party favors and the confetti off the ground, and then you're sitting there staring at each other. What do you want to do today? <laughs> right? I mean, it sounds funny. I can't personally relate just yet, but um, I have heard some stories, my people out there. So think about your retirement lifestyle. And this boils down to what we'll talk about next, tip number three, the retirement income strategy. Now that we know kind of what that looks like, give or take a little bit, a year here or there, a couple dollars here and there, what's the income strategy look like? This is how you generate returns in retirement. Because now the only like suck, the blood suck of your retirement is taxes. Well, what if just by a matter of taking some money from here and then a big chunk over here, we can reduce your taxes versus you just taking everything from over here? All right, so we want to play that game. That's one of the most fun things that I can do there. Consider that strategy. And, and part of that is when Social Security kicks in, right? A lot of people try to delay Social Security because they're like, I don't want to take the reduced benefit. That's your money. Even if you take the reduced benefit at 63, 64, and then 67 is full retirement age, you start getting that money back. You don't lose it forever. That's kind of a common thing that I have to tell people. So uh, factor in that retirement income strategy for sure. And then in my notes here, my most passionate one, I need you to perfect your retirement contributions. I'm not, when someone tells me I save 10% of my 401k, that's my favorite answer. I, I go 10%. How'd you come to that number? Cause I know you didn't. I know you just thought it was better than nine double digits are better than single digits, right? I love picking on people in a nice way. For things like that, because it tells me you, you might be a Dave Ramsey fan. Maybe you're saving 12, 15 percent, something like that. But we haven't perfected that number. Please save only what you need for retirement. It is not an emotional game. It is not an art. It is a pure science. When we know about your life, we can figure out to the penny how much money you should save for retirement. Why say, I mean, granted, a little cushions, fine, but why save so much more? Oftentimes when you do that, you're leading yourself into a tax trap later in life. For those of you that are about 50 now, 75 is your magic number. Watch that tax bill just go skyrocketing then. So save only what you need. And this kind of boils into like a bonus tip, because if you only save what you need and you know that's good, we've got a cushion, we've allowed for some variance there, but if you only save what you need, could we not use some of that extra money to pay down some debt? Some of you like to have your house paid off before retirement. Maybe you want to get a car a year before so you don't have to stress about that or something. You know, I don't know, vacations and things like that. Can we save for that stuff now? Yes. A good financial advisor or financial planner, if you want to use that uh, as well, um, will plan for things outside of retirement. Uh, that's my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to do for someone is nail down that retirement stuff and then go, tell me, what do you like, man? You a boat guy, right? You want to start a business? You like doing some woodworking? Uh, you like that she shed thing outside? You want to work towards that and be able to get away from the husband and just kind of go do your own thing? I love that part because if we're saving too much for retirement, we, we, we don't even think that's a possibility. I love when I get to open that door for people and go, yeah, you're good. You've saved enough for retirement. Tell me about your life. You like your spouse? You're going to retire with your spouse or you're going to find somebody else? I don't know. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> I like that sort of thing. So anyways, number one, uh, estate planning. It's time to look at that because a lot of you are going to retire with more money than you will actually need in retirement. Number two, that retirement lifestyle, paint a picture for me, right? Tell me what that looks like so I can start assigning numbers to it and, you know, shooting high, shooting low or whatever there. 
uh, housing, healthcare, travel, wedding goals, kids, legacy giving, things like that. Tip number three, retirement income strategy. That's how you make returns that are in excess of what you're supposed to in retirement. We save money on taxes. That's a return. So let's go through that. And uh, tip number four is please, God almighty, perfect how much you need to put in for retirement. Every other advisor here is going to be like, save money for retirement, save 15%, 20%. Man, they don't know how much you've saved already. What if you only need to save nine or six to get the match in your 401k? So really perfect that because your bonus tip is maybe you want to pay off some debt, work towards other wealth goals. I don't know, donate the money, something like that. So anyways, that's all I have for you here tonight. Trying a new mic. Uh, felt like I needed to lean into it a little bit. So hopefully uh, everything sounds good here. And uh, I wish you guys a good rest of your evening. Thanks for hanging with me. If you're looking to try some Irish whiskey, I probably wouldn't recommend two stacks. The first cut. It's okay. All right. See you later. <laughs>